But you see this here? You see this right here? You know what that is? That's dead weight. Clinton Jaws. I'm going to show you guys a video clip of a police chief talking about a thing called Health IM. And I might even have that wrong. This is new to me. I've never seen this before. It's an app that tells a police officer if they should arrest or not. And I'm, I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that AI is now telling us, telling cops, whether they should arrest or not or apprehend or not. But according to this video clip that I'm about to show you, that's exactly what's happening. And I'm like, come on, come on, come on. I might have this totally wrong, cops. Maybe you guys love this app, but if anybody came up to me and said, uh, "Hey, Clint, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have you use this app now, and it's gonna it's gonna tell you if you should whether apprehend or not," I'd be like, "Get the and you get out of here. You know that it's big wigs, okay? It's management that has come up with this dumb idea. I just think it's stupid, but maybe it's a great app. But you know, it's management." The ones that usually walk around with no uniform on. Or if they do have a uniform on, they don't have a gun or a radio. Coming up with these dumb decisions. And when I read it, and when I watched the video clip, I immediately thought, they're trying to cover their asses. That's what they're trying to do. Before Brenda Lucky left the force, she said, oh, we're, we're stepping it up on uh, how we respond to mental health calls. Because we're getting so much backlash on how... Every time a police officer deals with somebody, a, a lunatic, a, a crazy person, and that crazy person gets hurt, everybody, the media, everyone, civilians, look at the police like they're the problem. What are you going to do to fix it? We're going to come up with an app. AI. <laughs> it's, it just sounds ridiculous. And I know I'm ranting. i got to start this video clip, but I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Are cops too stupid? To make up their own decision? I couldn't believe it. I would, I'd lose my mind if, I, if my boss came up to me and, and said, we don't, trust, we don't trust your judgment. We want a robot to tell us whether or not we should apprehend or not. And again, I might be way off here. Okay, I'm going to watch a clip of Global. Some chief is on Global from the lower mainland. See what this fella has to say. Well, BC is rolling out a new <laughs> tool to help police officers cool. deal with people experiencing a mental health or addiction emergency to tell a tool to help you deal with people that are mentally ill, a tool for the experts. We need tools to help us. Okay. Okay. Thought we had it. Pepper spray a mental health or addiction emergency to tell us more about the public safety program Health I Am. We are joined now by health Delta Deputy Police Chief Harge Sidhu. Good morning, Chief. Thanks for joining us. First of all, I don't even understand this. I don't even know why these guys go on to Global. Global are idiots. Why are you on Global? Why are you talking to this guy? I'm not saying this newscaster is an idiot. I don't know him. I'm just saying Global is stupid. CTV is stupid. CBC is stupid. They're all stupid. So why is he talking to them? They've they've never done anything for you, Chief. Good morning, Jason. Thanks for having me. Well, Port Moody uh, made the announcement yesterday. We'll start using this app uh, today. It's been used uh, in Delta since 2019. For people who don't know about how it it's works, take great. us through the process oh. about Health I Am. Okay. So as we know, unfortunately, the uh, mental health uh, crisis is one of the major crises in our community. Why is that, right? Well, you know why. The politicians. The people who run our world. Who have doubled and tripled and quadrupled the size of the homeless population. The crazies. Free drugs. Who has to clean up that? The police. With apps. The BC Association of Chiefs of Police, which represents uh, police chiefs, uh, police chiefs. Um, executives, as well as other stakeholders in the stakeholders province, uh, recognize this issue. And Did I'm a part of our it? mental health and addictions committee. And we do you even get what the issue is? <laughs> well, we recognize the issue. OK. Sorry, I, I'm still trying to understand it. And we were looking at solutions to help our frontline officers. Oh, hey, I bet you it's helping you guys out. eh? Oh, yeah. 
And so Health IM Crisis Response Model was one of those tools that we were aware of that's uh, been implemented in some other jurisdictions across the un uh, country. And as you mentioned, Fantastic. in Delta, we've used it since 2019. This guy does And it's on. essentially a tool to support our frontline officers in making support. informed decisions. You need it to make informed decisions, guys. Your brain is no longer good enough. <laughs> See, this is what I'm getting out of it. Uh, obviously, with the support of the provincial government that you heard yesterday through their Safer Communities Action Plan, we were able to secure funding to provide a provincial rollout for this. Yeah. So essentially yeah, what yeah. it is, it's a digital public safety platform mm -hmm. and it has four components. One is a initially a pre response safety information kind of. So an officer responds to a person in crisis, mm -hmm. they're able to look at this app and be able to get. So you look at the app before you respond. Hold on, Billy. I know you're stabbing yourself to death. I got to check the app. Can you imagine the hell your supervisor's going to give you? Sarge, I had to shoot him. Did you run your checks before making that decision? I had no time. Code of conduct. <laughs> oh, I gotta rewind that. Okay, is this real? Is this real? To a person in crisis, mm -hmm. they're able it's to look crisis. at this app and be able to get information in there about the individual previous uh, interactions that we've had oh. and what may be some triggers to that in individual that would assist us. Oh, triggers. <laughs> triggers, are gonna, you're gonna review the app and you're gonna find out what triggers the mental person, the crazy man. Hey, Dufresne, I just checked the app. Don't tell him you like his jean jacket. Thank God we checked that app. Says here he doesn't like pepper spray. I guess I better leave that behind than when the officer interactions that we've had and what may be some triggers to that in individual that would assist us then when the officer arrives being aware of those triggers and helping them in de-escalating this he's crazy okay every day is a different day <laughs> his behavior is different every single day every single time you interact him, with him okay one trigger before ain't gonna do what can you name of anything give me one example of Well, jean jacket, jean jacket. I don't know why I'm going squirrely here, but <laughs> this is just, oh, he doesn't like the taser. Well, I guess we're going to just have to use our gun. This is so political. I can't even come up with, I can't even come up with an example in my head on how this would work. What, what's the app going to do? You know? Oh, it's good. Two to the head for driving a stolen Bobcat. Like I, how's it going to help me? This situation, mm -hmm. being aware of those triggers and helping them in de-escalating this situation. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to help them. De-escalate this what a load of crock. So basically, uh, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, just in the interest of no. time. So it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, possibly. Obviously, obviously, when you arrive at a scene, it could be two officers, but it's an app where they could use for resources. They could con uh, contact um, health professionals uh, for, for support. Um, have you seen the success in Delta since 2019 of this app? We don't care who's crazy, who's not crazy. We're going to respond to their behavior. This app is not going to tell me what threat assessment. I'm supposed, forget it. Yeah, yes, we have. So just quickly on the mental health, it allows the officers to go through a series of questions and make, series helps them questions. make rapid on-scene evaluations. You got to go through a series of questions, but it's rapid on-scene evaluations. Really, really. Go through a series of questions and make, helps them make rapid on-scene evaluations. And that information is then transmitted directly in clinical language to the hospital that we may be taking the person in care. Mm -hmm. And so that's so important to get that information there ahead of time. Ahead of so time? We ahead of time? You want to get that ahead of time? Dispatch, tell a hospital, I'm bringing one crazy in. He's nuts. He's combative. Done. And now he wants me to... saving a lot of time. That's so important to get that information there ahead of time. So, so what we've important. seen from the benefits of the program is it provides, provides safety both for the officer and the individual because we have that pre-information. Mm -hmm. It also- Think about the safety. It's gonna save so many lives, isn't it? Allows us to get uh, information in regards to sharing with the hospital prior. So if someone's coming in that may have some uh, violent behavior, they're able to prepare for that. Yeah, we'll reduce and wait times, essentially. Wait times, reduce wait times. Pardon? It'll reduce wait times in hospitals. Oh, how's that? How's that global? <laughs> oh, you're a police officer now? Wait times? It'll reduce wait times in hospitals, essentially? Yeah, it does. So we've, oh, we've sure seen it that it really improves apprehensions as well. So that our It doesn't save any time. I haven't used it. But I'm telling you right now, it doesn't save any time.
but I know he's going to tell me it saves time. It really improves apprehensions as well so that our officers are making informed decisions. So we... Uh... Because you weren't before. It improves apprehension. Our apprehensions, about 75 to 80% of the officers that are taking people to the hospital are being admitted. So we're mm. making the right choices for care of those individuals. And we've noticed about a 20% reduction in our apprehensions because, again... That's a good thing? So you guys were doing it 20% wrong. 20% of the time, you, your decisions were wrong, according to the app. It's another tool to not apprehend people when we should be apprehending everybody. And you all know what happens when we apprehend them, right? All of them. Let's just say all of them, okay? They go up to the hospital. The doctor releases them. They're back on the street. There's no room. There's nowhere to put them. There's way too many of them. There's way too many of them. We need an app to reduce the apprehensions. And I get it. No cop wants to apprehend. Really, they, well, I had one constable, that's all he did, so he could be sitting down at his entire shift at the hospital. But you you apprehend, you're stuck up, at, up there for hours, guys. Unless it's a really good hospital, which it usually isn't, hours, sometimes the entire day. I was up there for a full day when I was a corporal in port, and at the end of my shift, I drove him all the way to Victoria. Doctors are screwed when they find out that they can't let this guy go. Doctors, to make their job easier, they let them go because they, they don't have the time to figure out where they're going to put them. Our wait times, they do fluctuate, recognizing oh, there's other challenges don't. that may occur at the hospital and uh, the capacity that's going on. Mm -hmm. But over the last three years, we have seen uh, anywhere from 20 minutes uh, to 30 minute reduction in oh, wait times. Bullshit. That may sound small, but when you combine that for Delta, we do about 500 apprehensions a year. It does add up to yeah. considerable time where I don't believe our a word of that. able to uh, spending more time at the, the hospital. information to the hospital. Right across BC, as of yet, the plan is to spread this right across the province, like a but virus. Delta's been leading the way and now Port Moody and we hope Vancouver one day soon but it seems like a very positive response sure to this new app the Health IM app so thanks for joining us tonight hey. no thank you so much you and we're very excited about the provincial so exciting this. so exciting one last short clip let's see it in action Buy that, it eh? is so important oh, God, that people when they are in a state of crisis be met with compassion and that the safety of everyone is taken into consideration the app has already been used successfully in the province in Surrey, Prove Prince it. George and Delta. Our Decisions. overall rate of apprehension has, it fluctuates, but essentially has dropped by about 20%. That's Health not good. Health IM will be rolled out right across the province. Government is funding an expanded critical care car program. Okay, I'm not going to keep on, I just keep on finding clips. But you see this here? You see this right here? You know what that is? That's dead weight. It, it, I have no, no offense to nurses. My woman's a nurse, okay? But I don't want her sitting beside me. You think she, I, she's not going to help me out? She is, this nurse is not helping this cop out at all. But reading the screen? The cop is more of an expert than she is. This is just, this is all politics. This is, that's what it is. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's a joke. And I, 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 I would go squirrely if I had to sit beside her and talk to her. And listen to what she had to say to me. She's she's no benefit. She's no help unless she's writing up my files. And I don't know. I'm going to stop there. I guess the RCMP, they're rolling it out. Everybody's going to be doing it. So let's get your Agora ready, guys. And uh, skip to the end. Challenge of the test. Dumb.